What's up ladies? Welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl Lorna Marie. Today for you I'm bringing you easy Thanksgiving appetizers or sides. Now this is stuff you can do that's going to be super simple. It's going to be halfway homemade. I'm not going homemade here. I'm a self-taught cook in the kitchen and I'd like to consider myself a decent cook but I would also like to consider myself someone who doesn't like to stay in the kitchen on the holidays. I have a whole series here for you guys. I'm doing my Thanksgiving prep which is going to be everything that I do the week before. I freeze stuff. I get super prepared so that way on the day of Thanksgiving everything is a breeze. So if you into that sort of video definitely consider subscribing and hitting that little bell so you're notified every time I post a video I do a lot of lifestyle mommy I love to be prepared and I do a lot of organization videos I would just love to have you guys I'll list everything I can find for you in the down bar including all of the recipes inspiration and my website that has all my favorites in one place I'm also doing uh, easy dessert so definitely stay tuned for that and if you feel like depositing some positive energies give her girl a thumbs up I'd so appreciate it so without further ado if you guys want to see what my easy recipes are for sides or appetizers, then just keep watching. The first recipe is going to be these delicious baked brie little baby pumpkins. They turned out so good, flaky and delicious. You guys, this is gonna be a hit. This is the tray that we use to bake the brie's. I put a sticky note and I mark it with the C so I know this is what I'm using to cook it with. I also mark my other ones with an S for serve. So I'm gonna add some parchment paper because we do not want these little babies to stick. Now I'm going to be using puff pastry sheets. I'm using the Pepperidge Farm, but Trader Joe's has some, some honey and these mini brie bites, which are amazing, you guys. I eat these all the time, so good. I take the puff pastry and I'm gonna cut it into six pieces and give them a good stretch. Then I'm gonna place the little brie's on each one. And now you can use a big one and make a big puff pastry pumpkin, or you can cut up pieces of brie and stick it on there. It's completely up to you guys how you wanna do it, but you do a dollop of honey and then you sprinkle the pecans on. It's so easy and it turns out really, really good, you guys. So now I'm folding it to make it kinda of look like a pumpkin. Now this one I'm twisting to make the little top part of the pumpkin, which if you don't have the next thing that I'm gonna show you guys, this is totally fine. Um, I'm showing you here how to do it really slowly, but I like to make these little grooves so it looks like a pumpkin, but it's really easy. And honestly, it doesn't matter. I feel like when it looks homemade, it's better. You don't want it to look store-bought anyways, because it's not. You're taking the time to make it. And here's my little pumpkin. And then you take these cheese sticks from Trader Joe's and you basically crumble up a little piece and you stick it in the top, but they're really good. You can use these also for your you know, cheese board or your cheese tray or whatever you want to, but you just stick it in the top and look how cute that is. So adorable. And now I'm just gonna be finishing up the rest of these. They will be going into a 375 degree oven for 15 minutes for the mini ones. Then I'm gonna be assembling them onto a tray and I'm not going to be baking all of these, you guys. I'm just gonna be baking two of them for you today just to show you what they turn out to look like. I am freezing the rest of them. It's a part of my next video where I freeze most of the items for Thanksgiving so I can have a fun day. But I'm putting an egg wash on here, which is one egg and about one to two tablespoons of water. And then you just brush it onto the tops. So that's what gives it that shiny, pretty appearance after you bake them. And this, I didn't put maybe enough egg wash. It's not as shiny as it could be. You can have them a little bit shinier, but I thought it turned out great. I loved it and they turned out so yummy. I'm just gonna cut this one open after taking the top off and you can just see that yummy brie oozing there and just the honey and everything, it just adds such a sweet and savory, crispy. It's like everything that you're looking for in an appetizer, it's all here. Next, we're gonna be doing sweet potato casserole. Now, here's the dish. This says C and S, because I'm cooking and serving. So I just wanted to show you guys the dish that I was using. And I'm using two large cans of sweet potatoes. Now, you can use four medium sweet potatoes if you wanna make them yourself in the oven. Then we're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. 
I'm reserving the other half for the crumble. I'm doing a half a cup of cream and two eggs. And I'm also going to be adding a fourth of a cup of sugar, white sugar. And I'm using a potato masher and I'm going to give these a mash. I'm not going to completely mash them because we like it a little bit textured. It's up to you guys. If you wanted a smooth consistency, you can put it in the blender if you really wanted it super smooth. And then we're going to cube up a half of a stick of butter. And I like to put this on the inside. I like having butter on the inside. Now I got this recipe from the Pioneer Woman and she did not use butter. And she also didn't put brown sugar on the inside. It changes the color of your potatoes, which I don't mind because I really love the flavor of brown sugar. But if you guys are concerned about the color, I would just stick to white sugar for the inside and reserve the brown sugar for the top. So we're just gonna stir everything together and make sure it's mixed without being too mixed. I know that sounds kind of weird, but we definitely like it to be a little more on the chunky side. Now we're gonna go for the crumble. So we are taking the pecans, the brown sugar, and the butter. This is another, I think, oh, this is three-fourths of a stick of butter and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then you're just gonna mix everything together until it's like a crumble. And we are also adding a half a cup of Bisquick or flour. We use Bisquick here, but either one will work totally fine. I actually love the way the Bisquick tasted in this crumble. And then we're going to dump out all of our mixture and we're gonna spread it out in whatever pan. And don't forget to spray it really, really good, you guys. It needs to be sprayed well. And then I made a little one because I just wanna show you guys how it turns out after you bake it, because I'm gonna freeze this, the big one and we are going to add the crumble on top. And then we are going to add the crumble on to the little baby that we're going to be using as our demonstration. And I'm gonna be covering it with some foil. Because the crumble's going on top, I cover it so it doesn't start to burn the sugar on top, just like if you were to put the marshmallows. So I did the time for halfway and now I'm going to be adding the marshmallows, which it was eight minutes. And then you put it in for another eight minutes. This is for the small one. And then it turns out beautiful and delicious. Now for the large one, you're gonna wanna put it in for 20 minutes, pull it out, add the marshmallows, and then put it back in for another 10 minutes. But it turns out so good. Now the next thing we're making is this green bean casserole. First, we are going to cook our bacon. And I have two trays here. This is a pound of bacon. And then I'm going to put all of my ingredients into a Ziploc bag because I am not going to be using the whole thing. I'm gonna be saving the sauce for Thanksgiving. Now I'm gonna be adding my brown sugar, soy sauce, and this is melted butter. Yummy. We have garlic powder, and then we're gonna mix everything together. Now definitely do salt and pepper to taste. Um, this needed, definitely needed salt and pepper. I ended up adding that at the end of the recipe, but definitely add salt and pepper into this mixture, and I would even add some to the top. Now I added this sweet chili, which is about a fourth of a cup, and it tasted so good. You don't have to use it if you guys don't have it on hand. And now I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this in this little ramekin that I have so I can show you guys how everything turns out. And then we're going to cut the bacon. I love using kitchen shears for everything, you guys. I've gotten everybody hooked. I cut my kids' food. I cut even my own steak. I know that sounds really weird, but I cut <laughs> everything with kitchen shears. Let me know in the comments below if you guys do that too. But if you can just imagine what the big one's gonna look like, it's gonna be so yummy. It was bomb, you guys. We made this recipe last year and it's definitely gonna be in the family. It's so good. And this is me eating a lot of it. The next recipe is these jalapeno poppers. And first you wanna start off by washing all of your jalapenos. And then you want to take your items that you're gonna use to cut them because this is the tricky part. 
I use gloves because if you touch your eyeballs after touching these, oh girl, it's gonna hurt. So I cut them down the middle and I start shaving everything out. I get all the spines, all the seeds because we do not like it spicy at all. I take everything out if you don't want it spicy. Now I'm showing you right here, you tip up the top, okay? And then you can kind of see the white part and you scoop it down. This is a melon baller and I feel like it makes it so easy because it's got a pretty sharp edge to it. Now I'm sure you could use something else if you don't have a melon baller, maybe like um, if you have like a ice cream scooper or some type of scooper. Then you take your Philadelphia cream cheese. You can use whatever brand you guys like. And you can't forget about the bacon, of course, the most important part. And now you just start stuffing every single pepper. I wanted to show you guys, I kind of like cut little pieces just to make sure I spread it out enough because I've done that before. I put too much inside and then I don't have enough for the rest of them. And after you stuff them, you start wrapping them. Now I like to tuck them over the top and then start wrapping and voila that's what it looks like it's super easy you guys and these are always a big hit some people add cheddar cheese like on top but we just like them with cream cheese and then you put them on your tray and bake them in the oven and this is how they turn out they're so good you guys i highly suggest trying these they're always a huge hit like i said and always delicious all right, you guys, I had so much fun doing this video. I hope you enjoyed all of my easy Thanksgiving appetizers or sides. Hopefully this gives you some more time with the family and less time in the kitchen. If you can use anything I showed you here today, give your girl a thumbs up, I'd so appreciate it. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and hit that little bell so you're notified. Like I said, I'm gonna list everything in the down bar for you and let me know some of your favorite recipes in the comments. Also, just come say hello. I've been having so much fun meeting you guys and reading your comments. And if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, give me another turkey leg emoji and let me know you made it all the way through. Thank you guys again so much for watching. And until next time, I'm always your girl, Lauren Marie. Bye.